Premier Scene. I'm Claire Bueno as we give you a taster of what's in store for the season in house. Angel of the film. Yes, angel, literally angel of the films. Yeah, I've come dressed as an angel tonight. Yeah, I mean, you do look like an angel. Oh, thank you. you. Perform like an angel. Oh, thank you. Now, um, when I when I was watching the film, to, it's actually it turns out to be like a revenge film. Did you yeah. see that? Yeah, it's definitely. I think people have kind of categorised it in horror. Obviously, there's very horrific elements, but I think it is more kind of a war-torn revenge flick because um, Angel does take her revenge quite drastically when she decides to do it, so yeah. What kind of struck me was that uh, even though she sees and experiences some horrific things, her spirit's never broken. Yeah, no, she never, I think it's she never gives up, like no matter how bad it gets, and it does get really, really bad at times, she keeps fighting until the, the very end. And um, lots of women have kind of come up and said, how much they love it because of that kind of strong feminist character, and I'm a, and I'm I'm a massive feminist, so getting to play some a girl that's really like takes down men and kind of never gives up, it was really really great. And so resourceful as well, isn't she as a person? So for you as an actor, that must have been wonderful to kind of in, in, explore all of those. Yeah, getting to I mean Angel's such a complex character, and getting to explore her and kind of kind of her physicality as well as the emotional side was really really great. Interesting thing, you, you, you talk about the physicality because she's actually um, deficit of two senses, yeah. her, her hearing and her speech. Yeah. So how was that? So how was that for you then to perform with that? Because I'm thinking you can, you know, not to speak, yeah. but you can't avoid yeah. not hearing. You can't avoid not hearing. So it took a lot of focus and control, and um, and sometimes like a big explosion would go off, and I'd go like that, and Paul would go, no, Rosie, real deaf, remember? Um, but I couldn't like stick cotton wool in my ears, so it just took a lot of focus. And I love, I love learning sign language. Like that was such an amazing part of the job. Yeah. We auditioned 130 girls, and Rosie came along in the last 10, and she blew us away. She had the vulnerability. She had the ethereal qualities. Um, but also she had a strength. A lot of girls were, were great in the, the vulnerability, you know, the sort of sad side and emotionally numb. Rosie had that, but you could see this little survivor that she could just go for it. I could just imagine her fighting a six foot five huge monster. And, you know, but yeah, she, she was able to switch from the emotionally numb to the sort of happy-go-lucky teenager in the flashbacks to a real strength, to the awakening of human, her humanity awakening again. So she was able to do all these different, you know, character parts and she was amazing. And interestingly enough, we're not even being able to articulate it because she's, she's dumb. Yeah, I said to her, you know, people think it's easy not to, because you've got no lines, but everything you say, you've got to say with your face and your body language. If you don't do enough, you look wooden. If you do too much, you look like, like a clown. So it was always very much watching, making sure everything she does was subtle, but there was enough there to, you know, tell her story. Whatever life you knew, it's gone. There is nothing outside these walls for you to believe in anymore. You will work for me. You will learn how to be kind to my friends. We always try not to make an exploitive movie. It's a dark subject matter that, you know, and real life horrors that, you know, girls are enduring. So we wanted to kind of bring a light to this subject, but, you know, make a film that wasn't gratuitous, wasn't titillative, and kind of was quite delicate in dealing with the subject matter, but keeping it dark, harrowing, and a slice of life of what it's actually like in those places. It was very evident uh, from the script that it was going to be dealt with very sensitively, and that's what I found very appealing about it, and I thought it was very unusual and a very clever way of getting um, a very important story well just really trying to create more awareness of, of this subject um, but in a way that is actually quite hopeful in the end. I've worked with, with Paul Hyatt, the director and co-writer for, for many years. I mean he's sort of dispatched me, he's killed me in about nine movies. So I, I had no sort of truck with the fact that he would be fantastic. I wanted to work with Paul as a director. I was very concerned about the fact that it could err towards torture porn and the abuse of women, women. Um, but I was really drawn to the fact, and I was sort of educated in a bizarre way, about the empowering of this character, of Rosie Day's character, of Angel. 
and, um, and, and not in a fantastical way, in a really believable way. Um, and something that I was very concerned about, the fact that it could, that it could be abused, this film, like the subjects of the film. And I, and, I, and I have to say that I feel very proud of it because I think that it's been handled with, I mean, we've walked that knife's edge with sort of a certain amount of honor. And in many respects, we've had an awful lot of positive reviews and support from women journalists and women that have seen the film. In fact, men bulk at this subject a lot more about the evil that men are capable of doing. And, uh, and also the fact that does this shit really happen? And unfortunately, yes, it does in every major conflict. So it, we're, not, we're not imitating, we're actually just saying. One of the co-writers originally done a lot of the research and passed me the research. And yeah, it's really quite quite troubling how you know it's extensive across Europe, Africa and, it, and it's not just a Balkan issue it was actually worldwide wherever there's wars civil wars girls are displaced rounded up and soldiers commodity and I was shocked at you know girls how they could be treated just like guns drugs and girls are all commodities especially in war zones and it was shocking we haven't gone as brutal and nasty as it really is we wanted to show enough that was shocking, but enough to tell the story, but not to a point where you couldn't watch it. And we went into the exploitation, across the exploitation line. When I was doing the research, that was, I, I had to sometimes stop. I, you know, I, I would read quite a lot of it and think, my God, this is so horrendous that a human could do this to another human, you know, and, and, and men can do it to women. And it, it, was, it was hard to do the research, but once you start getting into the story and you want to tell the story, and you know, you start to look to the actors and they want to play those parts, then it kind of gets easier because what you're doing on set is make-believe and it's more the research is the most harrowing part. Your life now is here with me. The relationship with Victor is kind of one on tenderhooks. You never know why he's being so loving to her when he treats the other girls in such horrific ways. It's does he love her, doesn't he love her? Um, does he have feelings for her and kind of Angel, I think Angel puts up with it because she would rather be in the situation she's in than be one of the girls that are being prostituted so she kind of keeps her head down and does what he, um, he says but it's also that kind of bit if he does protect her and does she have some feelings towards him? It's interesting that because he runs his brothel you would think of that as someone as a middleman and he kind of is the middleman and I think that's because people are a little um, there's this contradictory feeling throughout the film of what my relationship, or Victor's relationship is, with Angel. And so people go, oh God, does he love her? Does he hate her? Is, what's going on here? Is she just an asset? Or does he really do, does he really have a thing about her? Does he really want to save her? And so you've got this, I like that journey, because it's nuanced, and so that way you're wondering what's gonna happen next with this. Is this, where's this going? Um, and there's even points towards the end of the film where you think, my God, they, uh, what are they going to do? Just go off into the sunset together? That can't possibly happen. So your mind is going crazy about it. Um, but yeah, he's in the middle of the two extremes, I think, in that sense, yeah. And even in the house, yeah, he's in the middle of that extreme because you get the people who come there and you never see him do anything. War zones, uh, when these atrocities happen, it doesn't matter where it is in the world, you know, very normal everyday people in their normal everyday situations suddenly have to deal with extraordinary situations and then what can breed from that is extraordinary imbalances of character that may have always been there all the time but I think not always through choice but maybe through survival that there's the, you know people go in a direction that they wouldn't normally go in and, and people are shocked by the kind of people that would do something like that yeah I, I and Victor's certainly one of them. Yeah, he's he's certainly a victim of his own his, of his own surrounding, his own circumstances. But he is equally someone who's making the most of it as well at the same time. So I have just lost one of my best fucking men, and I just lost the girl. This is Sean, um, his character Goran. Goran murdered her family. She hates this man. Like this man is kind of the epitome of evil for her. And so seeing him kind of turn up makes her just panic and um, and yeah their dynamic is 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 really interesting it is interesting because I said I said to Sean there was there's like this real battle of wills between yeah. the, the two of you yeah, it's I like the tiny great. little girl and like the macho man fighting it out for survival which is quite funny why he's nasty is he he influence he, he's an influencer he influences people um, 
and unfortunately where he comes from which is, ba is research that I did people like the brown shirts like during the Balkans conflict people recruited from the terraces and then they you, but you cannot take the tiger you can't take the, the jungle out of the tiger unfortunately if you push them too far they revert back to what they are and that's Goran arrives with the, with the, with the, with political dreams in many respects and uh, and he, he, he is irked into behaving how he used to which is a thug and a bully and a nightmare we worked on the fact that you know these two guys had known each other when they were young men they grew up in the same area possibly the same village same town where uh, they probably even went to the same schools together and I th and and I said it in another interview actually but um, there was one day when Sean said to me, he said, you know what, Kevin, I think that when we were at school together as these two characters, I, my character, Goran would have been really envious of you. He's the kind of guy that would have got, see, Victor's the kind of guy that can get you things. He can get you the next, you know, the latest leather jacket, the latest jeans, the latest drug. You want a gun, I can get you a gun. You want a, this, yeah, I can get you that. He's a bit of a, I think he's always been a bit of a wheeler dealer and he's just using that same skill in a post kind of conflict situation or almost to the end of a conflict situation. Um, but yeah, we built up a really good backstory there because we had that one central scene which actually sits almost right in the middle of the movie uh, with the cognac and the, in the room and we had a lot of fun with that. People become desensitized and that's the terrifying aspect and it happens after conflict after conflict. Although it's set during a generic Balkans conflict, this has happened in the Second World War, it's happened in major, every major war since. You know, how can normal people do these extraordinary things? And it's by give them beer, desensitise them, give them what they want, tell them they're fine and they'll do it. And it's, it's, ter it's terrifying. When I first saw you, I, I kind of had to do a double take because you look very different to what you're doing. Very different, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I think that um, a lot of people don't recognise me. They're like, were you that girl in that film? I just don't know about that. Um, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a bit of a change. <laughs> I would probably say it's probably one of the most harrowing um, acting jobs that I've probably seen. Would you agree? 100%. When I read the script, I genuinely had to put it down three times. I couldn't get through it, you know. This, this script is so powerful and real about the things that are going on there. And, and you know, my, my knowledge of what, what was happening and what is happening still, these events, you know, um, wasn't particularly great. And when I read it, it really moved me and touched me. And I think that um, being able to tell that story and being able to be an actor that gets the opportunity to do such a dark and, and harrowing piece, I just think it's an honour, really is. You know, every day was different, which was amazing. You know, there were some days that I'd spend three hours non-stop crying. Um, you have to get yourself in quite a dark place, but to be honest with you, for me, it has to get to that for it to be realistic. And I hope that, therefore, you know, what was portrayed on screen is, you know, as close to what I would have wanted it to as possible. Um, but, you know, it's... It is a skill, I suppose, in a way, to be able to get to that place, but it's also a real treat as an actor. You know, you, you hope for these roles, to be able to showcase that and to be able to go to those depths, I suppose. So, um, no, I feel very lucky. I had the best time filming. We had so much fun, even though it was a very dark story. Like, we, we had so much fun on set and kind of just, like, it was my, it was my first feature film, just learning kind of everything and taking it all in and now film's kind of what I really want to do. So hopefully that will continue and I, and I absolutely loved it.